China in historic transition. Challenges and risks abound. China's problems are daunting. Slower growth, social imbalances, industrial overcapacity, massive pollution, global volatility. How to address such diverse, complex issues? China has an overarching integrated strategy. It's called the five major development concepts. Innovative development, coordinated development, green development, open development, shared development. How can China create a culture of innovation throughout its economy and society? In this episode, Closer to China explores the first major concept, innovative development. In May 2016, China's highest authority, the Standing Committee of the Politburo of the Communist Party of China, led by President Xi Jinping, met with members of China's leading science and technology organizations to discuss one specific theme, accelerating China's innovation in science and technology. President Xi says China should become one of the most innovative countries by 2020, a leading innovator by 2030, and a powerhouse in science and technology by 2050. For China to be strong and for people's lives to improve, she said, great scientific and technological capacity is a must. The only way for China to become a high-income nation, he stressed, is to speed up innovation. The innovation-driven country that China is aiming for means relying on scientific innovation as the main force for its social development. If China wants to further develop its economy, it can no longer count on increasing investment volume. Instead, it has to promote innovation. History also links a country's innovative capacity and its household income. The historical precedents are pretty clear. Uh, in the 18th century, England was by far the most innovative society in the world. England also had the highest wages in the world. In the, in the 19th and 20th centuries, the U.S. became the most innovative society in the world. It, is, it had had during that entire period far higher wages than England. It had the highest wages in the world. There seems to be very strong evidence that it is the, uh, an economy driven by households, by consumption, that tends to be the most innovative economy. Since China began its economic reform in the 1980s, the low cost of land and labor gave the country an advantage in developing its manufacturing industry. The world's factory, that's been China's label. But made in China products won customers through cheap price, not good quality. It's embarrassing when Chinese flock to Japan to buy products, such as electric cookers, because they think the Japanese products have a better quality or design than the ones back home. Recently, some multinational corporations have been moving their factories from China to other countries, especially in Southeast Asia, looking to lower their costs. China realizes it must upgrade its manufacturing. But high-end manufacturing has been China's weak spot. Many of the key technologies are owned by Western companies. China is a major maker of cell phones, computers, and TV sets, yet 80% of the most important components of these products, microchips, are bought from other countries. In 2014, China spent more than 210 billion U.S. dollars on purchasing chips, even more than it spent on oil. Investing in high-end manufacturing not only makes economic sense, it also provides stronger security because many of these technologies are essential for national defense. This is why China has prioritized a set of key projects to elevate the country's capacity for science and technology. One of the most difficult is China's own commercial airliner, the C919, because the industry's two giants, Boeing and Airbus, have dominated the market for decades. China must mobilize the entire nation's resources to break foreign control of many key technologies. In November 2015, the C919 made its debut in Shanghai. The crowd was energized and filled with pride. 
it meant China was closer to its dream of building its own civil aircraft. I'm so excited. C919 is like a baby of ours. The debut of the C919 attracted worldwide attention. It's the C919, can carry 168 people. It's to compete directly with planes offered by the global plane makers Boeing's 737, Airbus's A320. And as you might imagine, both of those plane makers will be watching this new player over their shoulder very closely. The C919 still must go through all kinds of rigorous tests. It's scheduled to make its maiden flight in late 2016. Thus far, orders for more than 500 C919 jetliners have been secured. To understand China's aspiration and determination to compete in the international aviation market and as a prime example of innovation, as the first of the five major development concepts, I went to Shanghai, the birthplace of the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, or COMAC, the company that's undertaking the grand mission of building China's first civil aircraft. Jin Zhuanglong is the chairman of COMAC, a state-owned enterprise established in 2008 to meet China's demand for civil aircraft. As the country develops, Planes have become a very common way of daily transportation. In the coming 20 years, the Chinese market alone needs about 5,000 planes. Demand for the C919, the single aisle aircraft, is already about 3,600. So China needs to independently design its own aircraft to meet our tremendous needs in this area. China's bid to build its own civil aircraft began even earlier than Airbus. In the early 1970s, China built several Y-10 models. One even made its maiden flight in 1980. But the project was halted soon thereafter. Mr. Wu Xingxi took part in designing the Y-10. Although the program stopped, his passion for aviation did not. I asked him about the sculpture in front of the Y-10 and the slogan underneath. What does it mean? This sculpture. Never give up. Never give up. <laughs> Three Y-10s were built, but then the program was stopped. I wondered what had happened. That reason, uh, in my understanding, was the lack of the whole range practice from the market development, engineering development, quantity production, and product support and the customer service. You just mentioned that we were searched and launched the Y-10. But for various reasons, the project was put to a stop. But my take from that experience was that we should have carried on. Aircraft industry needs a large investment over the long term, with demanding requirements and high risks. So there are many challenges to be conquered. We have to be persistent enough to finally attain our goal. Okay, let's talk about uh, the importance of innovation in the development of commercial aircraft. Um, innovation is a term that everybody uses, but in the reality of making things work, how do you think about innovation? How do you encourage innovation? Talking about innovation, it's a, some task, something. It would need uh, quite a long period of time. So government's mm -hmm. policy and uh, sometimes economic support to the society is absolutely necessary. I see innovation in three categories. One, functions of innovation, products and processes. Two, 
kinds of innovation, disruptive, revolutionary, and incremental, evolutionary. Both are necessary. Three, levels of innovation. First level, big vision. COMAC is a great example. Second level, organization. How to create a culture that encourages innovation and doesn't suppress it. Third level, individual. What kind of personalities are innovative and how to nurture them? To build the C919 in such a short time has been a huge challenge for COMAC. It had to overcome numerous obstacles, particularly the lack of domestic technologies and aviation experts. Above all, it needed to introduce a more market-oriented management system, which is not the norm for China's state-owned enterprises. In retrospect, after seven years of development in COMAC, we can conclude that our work features innovation, entrepreneurship, and creation. This is our concept of forging new trends of development. That is, our legal position has established the modern company system. On the basis of governance, we have been brave in making innovations in company governance. Secondly, in terms of management innovation, the key is to improve efficiency. We have not yet 10,000 personnel in total, but we need to develop two or even three aircraft. How should we coordinate our resources? The key lies in innovation. In response, we put forward a six-dimensional management model. That is, we have to manage our planning, technologies, quality, airworthiness, funding and personnel and coordinate between them all. To reform the management is just the first step. To build a world-class aircraft, COMAC must work with the best suppliers across the globe. The engines are the most important part of an aircraft, but the C919's engines are not made by COMAC. Zhu Yan is head of the power plant system department. He has a team of about 28 professionals working on the design of the C919's engine. Okay, in, in my department, uh, my department is called uh, the power plant and the fuel system department, and uh, we have already 150 people, more than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my team, I, I have the power plant uh, team uh, system, and uh, we have 28 people work, working with me together. Uh, some always people ask me, uh, question us, because we are not a manufacturer of the engine. Why you have so many people and work for what? <laughs> in fact, uh, I think uh, uh, there is a very important uh, uh, innovation. Uh, it's called, uh, we call it uh, integration uh, innovation. In fact, uh, for all the aircraft, we have so many different uh, systems. And uh, as uh, one most uh, important uh, power plant, how we you know, integrate this power plant to the aircraft, how to make sure it is functioning well and to meet the other requirements from aircraft, from other systems, it's very uh, sophisticated. You have used the term innovation several times. Uh, now, is innovation just sort of like a buzzword that everybody has to talk about, or does it really mean something? In fact, for us, uh, it really means something, I think. Sometimes we are questioned is, uh, you know, we just uh, buy different uh, systems from different uh, suppliers from outside, mm -hmm. all of these. So how can you make sure this is, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's your Chinese product? But I, I need to, uh, when we think about it, we need to take an example, like, like our um, competitions, like uh, Airbus, Air Boeing. In fact, they don't manufacture the, the uh, engines, even sure. themselves. Sure. They purchase, purchase uh, the different system from the over or uh, worldwide. So why uh, uh, Boeing, Airbus can do this and we cannot do this? Uh, I'm just curious. <laughs> I don't know the answer. So in developing large aircraft, we have to stick to our principles. Specifically, China designs the aircraft, improves the system, and calls for bidders from all across the world to raise the percentage of domestic-made aircraft. Because some of the spares made by China are not up to standard, we also have to invite tenders from across the globe to guarantee quality.
I see no conflict between independent development and international cooperation. Rather, they complement each other. If we do not open up to the outside world and adopt the most advanced resources in materials and technology, our future would simply be bleak. China must speed up innovation. Professor Huang Gang thinks that allowing different modes of innovation plays an important part. I see three tiers of innovation. Tier one is imported innovation. Tier two is integrated innovation. Tier three is independent innovation. Meet China's decision makers and thought leaders. See them in action, hear their views, debate their policies. Meet China's leaders with me. I'm Robert Lawrence Kim. For innovation to succeed, nurturing talent and fostering an environment that appreciates innovation are essential. State-owned enterprises are usually considered rigid and not very conducive to change or friendly to individuality. So what about innovation here at COMAC? Can COMAC management stimulate the kind of innovation that is required to compete with Boeing and Airbus? The Xi'an Aircraft Company is the supplier of aircraft wings for the C919. This metal board is the raw material for the wings. It's entering a big white box called a shot peening machine. Every curve and dimple on the surface is smoothed by a sophisticated barrage of particles. After comparing tens of thousands of designs, Comac finally chose a type of supercritical wings. This pair of wings, made in China, is one of the parts that makes Comac proud. The critical shot peening technology was developed decades ago in the United States and Europe. After more than 20 years with much patience, China finally broke the foreign monopoly. In one corner of the workshop, there's a stack of about 3,000 failed samples. Now, the company is making supercritical wings for Airbus as well, and it's in discussions with Boeing about future cooperation. For a large developing country like us, we should make contributions to the aviation industry for all humanity and establish our own system of commercial aircraft. From this aspect, we boast widespread influence. For example, influence on science and technology, on the economy, on development of basic research, and the mechanisms and institutions of our whole aviation industry. As China's aviation industry develops, more domestic companies will derive real benefits. A C919 has tens of thousands of components. To improve efficiency and accelerate the design process, COMAC has assigned many parts to both private and state-owned enterprises across China. In Wuhan, capital of Hubei province, engineers are discussing which material to use for the C919's cooling module. These engineers don't work for any state-owned enterprise or government research institution. Their company is a private firm, founded 14 years ago. Their revenues come largely from repairing aircraft components for various airlines. Mr. Wang has asked his employees to keep records of every aircraft part they've repaired. Now the company has a room filled with such documents. This helps the company to develop several essential technologies for producing aircraft parts. But before COMAC was founded, there was no market for these technologies in China. After the C919 program was launched in 2006, COMAC approached Wang's company, Wuhan Hangda Corporation. We've been waiting for the opportunity. You know a project like building an airplane is usually planned by the central government. 
It's difficult for us to compete with state-owned enterprises in this field. The C919 program has generated high demand for Wang's company's products. To meet the demand, Hanga Corporation built several laboratories. Now the company has more than 600 employees. There are about 300 such private firms in China supplying parts for the C919. Innovation is the first of the five major development concepts, and it is the energizing force for the 13th five-year plan. The scope and impact of such innovation requires deep understanding and broad application. For example, to optimize national innovation, government-sponsored R&D must work in concert with the market playing a decisive role. All measures should synergistically spur the development of more creative and productive ideas. Combining research with market demand is the critical combination for science and technology to play an effective role in growing the economy. But since scientists in China's research institutions don't have ownership of their scientific achievements, they don't have much incentive to commercialize them. But this policy is now under review. China's own low-speed magnetic train has recently started test runs. About 60% of the key technologies of the train are the work of a research team from China's Southwest Jiaotong University. It took only four months to commercialize their research, much shorter than even normal international standards. The key to the success was the pilot reform that allows the research staff to own as much as 70% of their research results. Under the new policy in 2015 alone, the team led by Professor Luo Shihui earned almost $2 million from CRRC, China's high-speed train maker. Our cooperation with the big companies has guaranteed commercialization of the technologies. For our team, it means our work has been recognized by the market. With the money earned, our future research will become easier. Like Southwest Jiaotong University, many other universities and research institutions in China are now giving more freedom to scientists and engineers to commercialize their research, an important step for China to fulfill its innovation-driven strategy. In innovation-driven development, the central agenda is to leverage innovations, especially adjustments in scientific and technological strategies to make enterprises the major participants in innovation. By building a dream village, high-tech zones and other spaces can form a whole industrial chain from innovation to incubators and then to industrialization, therefore driving regional development and restructuring regional industries. The four innovations, theoretical, institutional, technological and cultural, are incorporated together in the concept of innovation-driven development. And for the first time, theoretical innovation was put as the number one priority. This is because as China develops, we are increasingly aware that neither the paths that developed countries have taken nor urbanization based on the concept of regional development can perfectly fit into China's development needs today and for the future. We need to redesign the development model. Well, innovation at the highest level is theoretical innovation. For example, the theory of the primary stage of socialism that we put forward has served as a great theoretical foundation for various policies implemented since the reform and opening up. In the past, we were wrongly affected by left-wing thinking and issued many policies which were not in tune with the fundamentals of economics. Root causes of our past wrongdoing lie in the lack of understanding of the economic stage in which we are standing. The theory of the primary stage of socialism was put forth at a time when we realized we had low productivity. 
Developed countries enjoyed a per capita GDP of 50,000 US dollars, while we only scraped by with a few thousand. Dating back to the time before the reform and opening up, China's per capita GDP was not even 1,000 US dollars. So we were lagging far behind. We had to take measures based on China's national conditions and promote rapid economic development. Technological innovation is at the core of innovation and takes the leading role in innovation in general. Science and technology constitute a primary productive force which determines production relationships whose development further determines the superstructure. Therefore, we prioritize breakthroughs in technological innovation while we exert our efforts for comprehensive development. China's innovation strategy has been progressing. From 2011 to 2015, during the 12th five-year plan, China developed high-speed railways, making travel around China much easier. Manned space flights became a reality. The Tianhe-2 supercomputer has held the title of world's most powerful computer since 2013, and the Baidu satellite navigation system has made China the third country to have such a system. Moreover, the Internet is connecting rural areas as well as big cities. High-tech companies like Huawei are brightening the image of Made in China. Beijing's Zhongguan Sun Zone, named China's Silicon Valley, is witnessing business startups every day. You know, I, I think you know, China's got a very bright future. I have a lot of confidence uh, in China, uh, partly because uh, they take a long-term view. They, look at what other countries are doing, uh, you know, China's going to be contributing more and more to the world's innovation. In China's grand mission to transform its economy, innovation is the first of the five major development concepts because China needs breakthroughs. Incremental improvements are no longer sufficient. But innovation-based business is more difficult than business based on low-cost manufacturing. Innovation cannot be top-down commanded. Innovation cannot be bought solely with money. What determines market success is often not obvious, and subtle effects not in one's control can make or break new products or services. The success rate for innovation is by nature low. This means that an innovative-based economy must accept failure. If all of your ideas works, it means you do not have enough ideas. Big innovation is a disruptor. It does not respect tradition, seniority, or authority. For China to change, it must be innovative. That's why watching innovation takes us closer to China.